What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna go through the Edmund P competitor ported versus the Spectre Comp, um, obviously which is compensated at the end of the barrel. So first things first, safety check these guns. So they're both safety checked. Um, what we're gonna do is just basically talk about both of these. So. I wanted to compare these two for a number of reasons. One, this this gun I have physically, you know, you buy the gun, it's about $13.99. Uh, there's not really that many deals, especially if you want the blackout configuration, you probably can get it 50-ish dollars cheaper. Um, on this one, I have a stipple job, a Streamlight Armor. Uh, it comes Armor cut already. And uh, so it actually fits, I believe the uh, Leopold Delta Point Pro. However, you still can fit on the RMR plate or the, uh, it comes RMR compatible. So with that being said, there's a little gap, but once you physically screw them in, as long as you uh, watch where you're uh, physically, how you're lining it up, it works out really well. So either way, um, just to kind of break down the price of the two, and we'll kind of talk about the comparison. So um, for this one, the gun's 13, about $13.99, right? So let's just, let's just use anything pre-tax. So for it's about 1400 bucks for this guy, we're just gonna say you can get these for between 125 to 150. So we'll just say 150, and we'll use that for both. So 150 on the 1400. So now you're uh, 1550 gas pedal. It's 50 bucks or six. Um, there is another. Uh, you're right to 1600, right? And then other than that, I really haven't done anything. The RMR is optional because it has uh, excellent um, X-ray sights. I wish they were um, flat. However, they're not. And the, again, the RMR is optional. You don't have to have the RMR. You can put the RMR on here too. It gives you a place to come out like that out of the box. Everything else you see here is physically um, how pretty much how it comes. So uh, I don't want to factor that into the price because I don't have, I, I choose not to run an optic on this one because I do like the the sights a little bit better on that one, but they're, they're pretty identical. So this one for about 1600 bucks, okay? And then we're gonna talk about this guy. So this guy, uh, you get these, um, probably can find about 900 bucks, $150, $150 for the light, $175 for the porting. So, you know, you're what, 900 plus $150, you're to $1050, $175, yeah, you're like $1175, so less than $1200 bucks for this one, which is still less than the initial purchase price for this one. Um, and I don't, I don't remember, I think I did, I don't I remember if I figured in stippling into this one, but either way, I think I paid like two, 250 maybe or something like that for, for this one. So obviously this is a much more cost effective um, choice. Um, however, I did take them to the range and the other big changing factors other than the physical grip module being altered, this is all um, pretty much the grip module and the gas pedal are the only things that are different. I don't believe that would void the warranty um, for any means, maybe for the grip module itself, but not anything for the fa fire control unit or anything like that. This is pretty standard or typical to, to, to get this done. Um, so this one, I would believe this one would still be covered under factory warranty. I'd have to double check on that um, just because I have the stippling, but everything else in the gun is physically um, how it comes. So again, we are 1400 250 plus the gas pedal plus that now now you're you're probably you're closer to 1800 bucks for this one because you're figuring 1400 250 for that that puts you to 1650 and then that's another 50 so that puts you to 1700 plus that 50 so it's 1850 in this one uh, we're not including the site right and then versus this one about 1175 uh, with everything done and then obviously you're going to avoid your warranty with with porting the barrel um unless you had per se a backup barrel that you could physically drop in there because all you're doing the only they didn't do any modifications physically to the lightning cuts on the slide so hypothetically you probably could find another barrel cheap and then pop it in there if you ever need to send it back in and, and get your warranty claim there um they probably would catch catch on I, I don't know i don't know if they'd catch on to that if you shot through the other one some i don't think they would but either way let's talk about how these guns have progressed um, i have some range footage so we're gonna show you two tests. One, we're just gonna do a recoil with a full grip. It's it's a little bit different um, because this one actually has a full blown ledge that you can physically put your thumb on and force the nose of the pistol down. Um, so it's not entirely fair. This one more, even if you jam your hand, you're still, I mean, there's it, it's such a small area to use for friction that it's not completely the same. So I did two tests. I did a, um, 
physical two-handed shooting, just regular um, shooting. I'll show that now. Um, afterwards, I did another test. Now this one is really the, the test of recoil because this one has the physical capability of having that, that gas pedal there. Um, I think that's a little bit extra on terms of, of you know, being an unfair advantage. So I did a one-handing group sh uh, shoot. So I did sh shot him one-handed and I'll show you that one now. And now that we've seen both, uh, I will tell you, I'm not sure how the videos physically plant, uh, played out. So I will just tell you, out of re total recoil, I will tell you, this one had a little bit more, uh, you, you'll notice the rocking motion, like you just will. That, that's every SIG. They have a higher bore axis, as you can see, right? This The reciprocating mass is, you know, you can fit your finger underneath where it physically would be. So it's pushing this down, so you're going to get kind of this this motion right even with that being said this was a faster gun and i was kind of not excited to make this video because i was gonna essentially sell this from just sheer disappointment but the sig definitely lived up to it to the uh, expectations for the price for me anyways i mean you may not um I'll tell you, if you were to shoot this one week and then this one another week, you probably wouldn't notice that big of a difference. Uh, but shooting them side by side, I was able to. This one was a lot quicker. Also, in the one-handed portion, I'm not sure how it looked, but I will tell you firsthand, I felt a lot more recoil on this one with the one-handed shooting um, as opposed to this one felt a lot more comfortable. I could shoot it quicker. The only thing that has started to develop, which I find very interesting, this one doesn't have the wobble my X5 Legion does, but I will show you. Hold on, I did it wrong. So, so when you're resetting, right, check this out. So there is a, there, I don't know if you could hear that, but it's a super tiny click right there, and then the trigger does not work, okay? So it's very, very weird, but I'll show you again. I'll try to get a little closer so you guys can hear, but there's the click. And then when you pull it, it's leading me to make some false pulls, which I don't know why. There it is again. And then there's the actual click. So until you hit that, that actual second click, I don't know why it does. And my X5 doesn't have that issue, but this one does. So... I, I don't know. I, I tried to look into there. I can't seem to find anything. This one, I haven't even modified the actual trigger. I didn't do a trigger job on this one. It, it's just in the X5, I physically put it back to um, the OEM. I, I bought a separate housing and put the OEM one back in because I wanted to have a heavier pull. This one's a lot lighter than the X5. It's got a much lighter trigger pull. Um, but I wanted the X5 a little heavier just in case, like, you know, if I ever wanted to per se carry a gun, I, I would probably carry the X5 just because it's not, it's just less, less things to go wrong. Like, you know, long-term shooting, you could gunk up your, your compensator and you'll start to see there's a, it's probably hard to see. It's a little hard to see in there, I'm sure, but it starts to create a lot of, uh, area for propellant to stay in there. So like over, a, you know, I'm talking like 
6,000, 7,000 continuous rounds, maybe that could be something to where you start getting a little bit of different uh, variant, you know, variance in the actual way that the slide, you know, functions because of how much gunk gets, gets put up there. Um, I don't really know. I think it would take a lot of rounds for you to physically see any changes in accuracy or anything like that, but um, I don't know. I just don't know. I, I've noticed that there is gunk that gets filled. There's like a channel inside of here all the way towards the bottom and it kind of gets kind of gets gunked up in there. So just something else that I, I found interesting. Both are amazing guns. By far, I've had zero malfunctions with either of them. Um, I would recommend both of them to anybody who's considering to physically start shooting and, and you know, want a multi-purpose gun. I think this one would be a little bit more functional just because of the weight difference. You could physically get a, uh, a holster that's outside the waistband if let's say the apocalypse came this would be like an all-purpose gun and um, it's also an attractive gun um, I do love on this one I think this one has the best stock trigger you can get so it has a little bit of creep there's that and then you pull it back to the wall tiny bit of creep and a brick it's so nice such a nice break I absolutely love this I, I love the trigger on this one I love the it's got like a, a spongy feel a definite wall and then a nice break and i love that because you know exactly where it's going to break so you can get into this form of repetition as opposed to this one's it's very weird my x5 is super heavy in comparison to this one it's not a heavy trigger but in comparison to this one it's heavier but it breaks like literally you pull it any and it breaks this one is a little different it has a little bit of creep and then it breaks but it's lighter so it's really, really hard to gauge where it's going to break. And I feel like I have some inconsistent, more inconsistent um, trigger pulls with this one. And it's something definitely that you could get used to. However, you need to practice with it a lot. So that way you can understand how that physically will go. As opposed to this one having a more definitive um, expectation, you kind of know there it is. So um, I like this one. I don't think that you'd ever have any surprise, um, you know, on accident shots. And not that you will on this. I mean, if you're pulling the trigger, you should intend to shoot whatever you're aiming at. However, um, sometimes it breaks a little bit sooner than you expect it to. And so uh, out of that kind of difference factor, I do like this one a little bit better. Just my opinion. Um, but this one definitely does recoil less. If you're not, if you're not going to be, uh, distraught over the fact that this one has less, uh, or it, this one weighs more and this one weighs less, you don't care about that. Then the X5 Legion or the X5, uh, or X5, the SIG Spectre Cop might be the choice for you. It just might. Um, nevertheless, it still comes compensated. So obviously your divisions are going to change there if you're shooting it for like a uh, competition. But if you're just looking for a well-rounded gun, that's extremely reliable. It's got a really heavy, um, like a PVD coating on here. Um, I think, I, I don't know if it's nitron or whatever the case is, or, or if it's, it, it might be DLC, but it's got a really thick coating. This is not worn off, um, very easily. Uh, and it's been a fantastic gun. I like that it's already optic cut. You don't got to waste any money. You don't need any plates. It just fit, physically fits on the uh, RMR. And the, if you like the Leopold, the Leopold for me is just too big and bulky and tall. I love the RMR. And I think that when you're shooting, it makes it a little bit easier. And for me, since I've practiced the RMR so much, it's easy for me to find the dot. So I absolutely love it. Um, but, you know, they're both fa fantastic guns. The takeaway from this is you can still spend a little bit less on, on this guy and get a fantastic gun that you'd probably enjoy a little bit more in terms of carry and all around use. Uh, this one, you still could, but it's, it, it is, you know, significantly heavier, about, you know, just shy of a pound heavier. So you'd want to keep that in consideration. But if you're going to use it for like open carry or, or work or something like, you know, if you're in law enforcement or whatever, and they would allow you to have one of these, this would be a fantastic gun. I absolutely, you know, it'd be a great home defense gun, competition gun, uh, work gun, whatever you need it for. Um, obviously not inside the waistband holster. Uh, but some people do do that with this one just because it's a little bit skinnier. Um, they typically do take off the magwell, even though the magwell doesn't seem to be as big as this, this other one. I know it's kind of hard to judge, but this one's significantly bigger and it kind of flares out. As you can see there, it's significantly bigger on the flare all the way around. So, uh, this resembles to me more like a competition tear and tackle, um, magwell, which I really do like. Um, that's not a problem for me, but I, I would never inside the waistband carry this gun anyways. So of the two, this one recoils less. This one's much more affordable. You don't need to send it off for stippling. Not that you need to on this one, but I do think it's a vast improvement. Um, 
And all in all, I would say I'm very, very shocked with the findings that I found in this competitor. It, it was it was very relatable, different, um, or I guess minimal changes. This one did uh, recoil less. However, I didn't really feel a big change until I shot one-handed. So maybe that's something that's a concern for you. However, two-handed, they they were pretty close. This one was just quicker for me. But the trigger in this one's so much better that it was kind of making up for some of that. So this one was just minimally quicker. So. Um, Shooting wise, it's really hard, and you might get good enough with this one to make a huge uh, difference in in uh, follow up shots. However, for me, I've shot these a lot, and other than for that false false like little wall that it creates, um, I love both of them, guys. I mean, if you have a little bit more money to spend, I think long term this one will probably hold up better, just because um, you know Sigs have a, a excellent track record as far as you know longevity uh, goes. I mean, you know. And I, I don't think that the P320 line is, is susceptible or, or, I guess, prone to rusting out. So the X Macro is the only one that I've seen that. And I've seen a ton of people uh, leave those reviews about it. So it just seems to be maybe a product in that specific lineup. I don't see anything about these um, physically rusting out. There are some hit or miss with the recoil springs on this one. So, but it's a, it's a forty dollar part or whatever. Yeah, like a forty dollar part. So it's it's a pretty minimal thing. Um, and once you have it, it physically doesn't, you know. It doesn't seem to malfunction anymore. So uh, next week, we're going to talk about uh, range day, what to bring to range day. Uh, we'll do like a, a get ready for the range day for all the newbies. This is supposed to be a newbie channel. I seem to keep doing these comparisons. I've kind of gotten away from like suggestions and, and kind of helping people get up and going. So that's something I want to focus on a little bit more. I want to give a huge shout out to all the supporters. We've had, um, we've, we're now over 300 subscribers. Uh, which is amazing, and I can't seem to thank you guys all enough. And we're gonna keep going. We're gonna see how big we can get this thing. Probably when we hit about 500 subs, we're gonna start a pa uh, Patreon, so that way uh, we can start getting some some higher round counts through every single gun that we have here. We're gonna run them all. We're gonna see about getting some different guns to the channel as well, and we can start to really advance these. We can take them all apart. We're gonna keep everything that you see. We're gonna start adding uh, more guns. That's at least my plan. Hopefully, everything continues to progress that way, and then we can start doing side by side comparisons and that'll help obviously people that have, don't even have a gun yet they can kind of see how they all stack up against one another we'll do more range footage we'll do longevity uh things so you guys can see so that way you're not buying a gun with the expectations of it's going to survive the 1000 rounds that everybody seems to do but then what comes after the 1000 rounds so this one's right about a thousand rounds now and it's fantastic but i still think every gun that you're probably going to look at including taurus will make it through a thousand rounds but most owners that shoot competition uh, and do those sort of things, they're shooting their guns 15,000 rounds a year. I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not, but as you get more into firearms, a lot of these people that are shooting, you know, Glocks, Canics, uh, things of those na of that nature, they're putting way more than 1,000 rounds through their gun in just one year. So if your lifetime expectancy of your gun is what you think is going to be one year, you're under false um, you know, pre, uh, I guess, uh, you're, you're just educated the wrong way. So, um, and that's what the purpose of this channel is. We're not going off of opinions or anything like that. We're just going off of a micro analysis to help the consumer, you know, everybody who's watching, we're trying to help you guys. I am trying to help you guys not make the wrong decision, not have to swap guns here, here, and there. I understand they don't lose a lot of value, but it's not fun for every, everybody. And everybody at the end of the day,